Hey guys, today I wanted to show you an interesting method of synthesis not used very often in the analog world. This method is called pulsar synthesis, and it's very similar to the concept of granulation, which I'm sure many of you know from Mutable Instruments Clouds. And yeah, if you're not too familiar with granulation, we'll also go over that as well, so let's get into it. All right, let's discuss what pulsar synthesis is, as well as its closely related neighbor, granulation. Pulsar synthesis was pioneered by Curtis Rhodes in the late 90s and early 2000s. He was a computer music guy and was quite interested in granulation and, you know, small bits of audio called pulses. I'll link to a paper he wrote in 2001 about the synthesis method if you're interested in reading about it more in depth. So, before we get into pulsar synthesis, I want to go over its closely related neighbor, granulation. And we'll look at this module here, Clouds, by Mutable Instrument, probably the most famous granulation module in the Eurorack world. And there are kind of three basic ideas of granulation I want to go over today that relate to pulsar synthesis. And that's rate, envelope shape, and granule length. Now, pulsar synthesis, or rather granulation, is based off of small blips of audio called granules. And basically, you can take any recording, any synthesizer, whatever, any piece of audio, run it through a gran granulizer, and it'll cut it up into these really small bits of audio called granules. And you can hear that right now, actually. This is actually a synthesizer I'm processing and here if I get the wet dry knob that's the original signal right turn the wet knob up signals now a bunch of little tiny snippets of audio very 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 short now let's go over rate which is this density knob on clouds if I turn the knob to the right you'll hear the rate of granules spitting out is increased so much so that I can't even hear the individual granules separately. They kind of bleed together. If I keep going, it's almost like we have the original audio, except it has a weird new texture. Similar, but not the same. Take it back down. And that's what it's composed of. Just these small little granules. Next, we, all, we can also go over granule length, which is the size knob here. If I turn it, you'll notice the granules are a little bit longer. Now, in clouds, you can't get the size super long, I have found, but, and it depends on other knob positions to see how long you can get them to sound, but the size knob does affect this even though it's only slight. And so yeah, it's just pretty much just changing the length of the granule, you know, instead of a quarter of a second, it's, you know, a third or whatever, a third of a second. And the last one we want to look at is the envelope shape. So each granule has an envelope applied to its amplitude, just like an ADSR. And for clouds, we can mess with that with texture. See, if I turn it all the way to the left here, the envelope is squarish. It just kind of starts and stops. But when I keep going, something more sine wave or triangle shaped. And here, this is actually a Gaussian shape. So it's a little funny little shape. I'll show a graphic on post or something. And so this is kind of like three basic ideas of granulation that are closely related to pulsar synthesis. So now that we have that foundation established, let's look into pulsar and see how they interpret these three ideas. All right, so this is kind of a basic patch or a basic module configuration for pulsar synthesis. And pulsar synthesis is really similar to granulation. The one big difference with it is that instead of taking incoming audio, there's actually real synthesis going on. As you can see, I have a VCO here, 
we're not just going to record the VCO and then chop up snippets of it. We're going to use, you know, some of these other modules to actually break up, break it up in real time. Let me show you what I mean. So first thing you do, you can take whatever wave you want. I'm going to take a sine wave just for simplicity's sake. Put it into your wave shaper. This is the first thing you have to do. That pulsar synthesis, since it's a type of synthesis, you actually want to mess with the waveform itself, you know? In granulation, you don't really have wave shapers, but in pulsar, you actually really need a wave shaper. It's one of the ways you get a lot of your tones. So it's, you know, we're, we're really affecting the waveform itself. So you're going to put it in the wave shaper, take the out of it, put it into the VCA. There we go, we can hear it now, but I'll turn it down for now. The next step is you're going to want to take either a copy of that original waveform, or you can send a square version, or whatever you want, put it into this clock. So this is a clock divider and a gate length changer, or kind of a PWM, but for gates. Um, it's a Bogue Audio uh, module, which is a very useful one. I use it in a lot of my patches. So you're going to put you know that into the clock of this gate changer and the clock divider. Take the gate, put that into a filter or a wave shaper or anything else that'll change the shape of that output gate. I'm just going to use a regular low pass filter in this case. Take the low pass filter and we're going to put it into the CV of your VCA. And that's kind of the trick. So, well, let's route this into the scope and I'll show you what all this does. Turn up the VCA. There's that waveform. And it's not it's not quite a sine wave, not quite what you'd get from a wave shaper. It's kind of something in between. And there are a couple controls here we can use to get different shapes. So we obviously have the wave shaper. You know, with the wave shaping, good. Have the gate length. And as you can see what it's doing. It's breaking up the waveform. It's putting snippets of silence in between the waveform. As you can see, when I put the length up, the wave kind of grows and lengthens, and you get more of it. Let's try it with different wave shapes. It might be easier to see. Something maybe like that. Let's see, look. It's like building itself. We're getting more of the wave. Until all the way, it's a, you know, regular cyclical wave right there. It's, you know, it keeps repeating. There are no breaks in it. Take out the length. I'm taking away the wave. So as you can see, it's a lot like granulation. Short snippets of audio with silence in between them. But we're doing it as a synthesis me method. We're affecting the waveform itself. And I also can change the nature of this silence, just like granulation with the envelope shape, by using our wave shaper on the gate that is inserting silence into the waveform. If I just put a low pass filter on it, it's kind of like low pass filtering the, the wave in a sense. Do a high pass filter, see what that does. Interesting. It's another thing to play with. And that's kind of the basic idea of it. You're going to have this gate length, you're going to have this wave shape, and this filter to play with. And one other thing, if, if you have the Bogue Audio one, which also has a clock divider on it, you can change the, the divisions of the gate which adds a second tone to it, which is amazing to me. And see, as the clock divides, you know, it keeps dividing, you actually get this kind of undertone series. And if you've ever played with an Atari punk console, this is the same thing you'll hear there too. This division of pitch, which I'm pretty sure is corresponding to the undertone series. I'll probably check that in post. Very fun. I like, I like to leave it at like two or three and then play with it. 
It's just, yeah, you get those two toned. It's so beautiful. And yeah, when you have gate length full, which means there's no gate, you stop hearing this tone. But once when you, you know, lessen the gate length even just a little bit, the second tone enters. And it's just, it's so, it's so nice. It's like um, it's a subharmonic generator. But it gets a very nasally tone, too. Very nice stuff. Very, very cool. And yeah, so that's pretty much Pulsar Synthesis. And you can kind of use it like any other synthesis. You know, we can put in a volts per octave here. We can add an ADSR to another VCA for this thing. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's just another interesting sound you can add to your, your rig. It is kind of module heavy. You do need a wave shaper and a, you know, a gate length changer, trigger to gate, gate converter. I'd say the VCF or whatever you're using to manipulate the gate can probably be left out if you don't have any room or you don't have that module. Um, but I'd say the VCO, wave shaper, VCA, and the gate to trigger converter are essential. But those are pretty common modules, so I'm sure a lot of you could try it. And it's just a fun way to get some interesting tones, a lot of nasally tones, a lot of subharmonics. Um, and it's a fun, some fun stuff, and you don't often see it in your Iraq. It's really been the digital technique, Pulsar Synthesis. And it's certainly more robust in the digital realm, but that doesn't mean we can still do it in the analog realm and get some good results. So, um, yeah, I hope you like it. Thanks for watching. And yeah, I also, yeah, I, I've been watched, seeing the views on my recent videos and my subscriber count, and it's blown me away. I never thought I'd have a video with pretty much 2,000 views, the Bifaco one. And we're almost at 200 subscribers, which is amazing. So thank you guys all so much for showing support for the channel. And I hope to see you, um, you guys watching more videos. Thank you.